Hi, okay. I just want to make a quick recap. Um, I've already looked through the game, so I'm just going to jump to a couple uh, points which I want to add. I mean, it's obviously always my view, and I just want to show some alternatives or what I think might have been a, a good other play. Okay, so yeah, I like to set up. Um, I'm fine, let's go to um, turn um, three. So um, this is all standard. Um, I guess here you'll see the next turn, it's a bit left open here. And what he then does is really um, pressurizing the ghoul here with the witch and gets him on the sideline, which is quite a nice play. Um, I still think the defense from the undead is fine. I mean, if they want to commit so much to one side, then yeah, they should do that. That's fine. Um, after all, with undead, it's against dark elves, not even against stopping the score, but also to force them to score early, um, which which is also good if they commit to one side. Um, yeah, blitz with the mummy. Always like it. Get the mighty blow in. Um, then here, yeah, not sure if you could have just blocked the witch actually, and kind of take into account that you might get crab pushed, but if you get crab pushed then they are also on the sideline afterwards, so it might just be a sideline ward and not sure which is better. Um, so then once you get uh, to this situation here, obviously lucky the, the mummy goes out, um, I think here now you have uh, very much open space and a lot of players and um, if we go forward now a bit you see I mean you, you, of course it's it's all the play I guess I don't what I don't really understand is why you need all these players why you don't just cage with these two players and then like get a third from the witch as a support like this because now you have to actually dodge away from the ghoul or you might have been able to just block him or even give an assist and set up the cage a bit further back instead. Not sure, I guess when you have two players out um, with darkies you need to focus also to get some hitting power in and block those ghouls with the tacklers and uh, try to get some advantage for the second half now. Um, I mean, do that quite well, always get the blocks, so not saying it's a, it's a, a bad play, um, just saying be sure to focus also the blocks and, and see that you can cage fairly well, but not over commit to the cage. Yet. Um, so the rest of this half is pretty standard, I think, I mean, you go over, you have a quite clear chance, uh, well, quite clear uh, way to go, back and forward, get yourself into position, um, yeah, which is fine. Um, yeah, actually very good defense on the undead to make you actually dodge or well not dodge but make some two dice blocks without block and um, very nicely solved with the chain push I think that's very good um, and then you can just walk in very good um, yeah the one turn without the mummies it's virtually impossible so I would yeah not even bother and just try to make some cash it's fine um, then the first turn of the second half, what I don't really understand here is why you would, um, I mean, I, let's stop this quickly, I understand that you want to block with your block players and that's why you block the ghoul first, what I don't understand is why you don't put like the mummy here, um, then you can block diagonally with the ghoul, if the guy doesn't fall you can just block this guy again with the mummy and then block this guy with the 
with the zombies um, to, to make sure you get the line of scrimmage out or at least down and then for sure I mean put them up here so you can block diagonally I mean it's still a three dice block um, which should help and then if we advance a bit here I <clears throat> don't really fancy the the frenzy block on the witch I think at that point I would rather uh, try to get the block on 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 this other uh, F7 player, the, the, the Shadower actually. Um, if you get the mummy over here and actually can twice block this guy, then it should be easy to get the two dice on, on the assassin uh, afterwards. Um, let's just break here quickly. I think. Um, Just this last turn before the doubles call. Um, I think this was all played well. I mean, doubles calls happen. I think we've played the same very well to cage first before attempting it. Um, he doesn't have anything. You have blocks, so fair enough. Not even sure if I would roost to reroll that early on for something like this. Maybe I would even just let it go. Um, and, and not used to reroll. <clears throat> um, then the next turn, I don't really see why you blitzing here with with. Uh, well, let's have a look quickly what happens, right? So you you do the assist, you blitz one dice. Not sure whether you have not seen seen that this is a one dice, or whether you've intentionally done this. But I mean, there's a couple options. So either you can just blitz on the ghoul. Um, I guess you want to have this assist here, so you get then the two dice into one dice. Um, however, I think a better option here, if we go back to the start actually, of this turn. Um, <clears throat> so obviously you have to block Frenzy Witch, which wants to block here. Um, so what I would do is I would actually go with this lime and put him here um, then block with the witch um, so you get a two dice into two dice and then you can even still block him again if you don't get him down yes your witch might be next to the mummy but that's your risk anyways um, then you can actually assist with your uh, leader and then blitz with the blitzer on, with two dice on, on the white um, I think it would be a better better way to, to play this turn. Um, what you did then, of course, um, it worked out. You got the POW. You're next to the ghoul. Um, you see here, you made uh, uh, two dice into one dice um, because he obviously isn't helping, whereas here it would have been two dice into two dice. Again, it's a POW, so uh, um, lucky there, do not uh, have any turnovers or anything. Then, yeah, I mean, guarding it off, it's fine. <clears throat> I think the next two turns are, are quite fine. I guess here, the question you have to ask yourself as the undead with three people out, do you want to go for the win and, and actually try to score in reasonable time? Or do you want to rather just say I'm happy with the tie and just want to stall it out? Because obviously chances for the Dark Elves to score are quite high. Um, and then we get to this turn where you kind of say, well, yeah, I want to win. So I'm going to score in the next turn. Um, so I think this is played fine. Um, except with obviously this guy has tackle and this guy doesn't and then you have three ghouls with dodge that need to dodge through so I'm pretty sure you, you notice that afterwards um, that that this zombie here probably would better go just here um, in order to then uh, dodge through here actually and set up a similar cage um, afterwards with the three ghouls also this guy not sure whether he adds value next to the witch who has dodge anyways or whether you could actually put more 
uh, pressure on these guys. Um, yeah. Also, one question on, on this turn is, um, do you really want to go next to this guy? Or do you just want to go like down here and then set up your screen like here, here, here and here the ball carrier? Because then you actually only need these two, I mean, these three ghouls and this guy and you have a, a, a quite a, a good cage and then you can still um, go for it to three, four, five, six, go for, go for it to actually close, well actually no, but almost close to cage. But then you can't go from this side on the ball. From this side, you have to uh, make big lengths. So might have been uh, another good option. Um, but so let's see, um, like that. Also, except for the tackle, don't really see why he should be next to the witch. Um, otherwise, fine. Um, <clears throat> So I guess it's good. Um, obviously, you get the one dice here, which which you take. I think it's fine. Also, setting up a bit of screening before. Maybe move her before. Not sure. Um, yeah. Of course, you also want to have some options in case you get the ball free to have somebody to pass to. Oh, she actually already. Um, then here. Yeah, I guess it's fine. You want to score. That's a very nice way to do that. Again, the question is, do you want to score or not? I think it's fine. If you if you want to win, then you need to risk some three plus. So pretty good, I guess. Even if you fa if you do the reroll here, you might just try to not score. Keeps open your options, maybe. So fine. So. 1-1 um, and you got the perfect defense which is perfect to put on some pressure um, and I guess uh, here you decide to not yet go in the range with anybody of course you won't really uh, do a pass anyways so um, I guess that's fine um, you've clearly committed to this side this side is basically out of questions uh, I mean, maybe you could have gone for it a bit more, but you still have three more turns, so I don't think it's needed. So I think it's it's fine. Um, <clears throat> then yeah, so <clears throat> let's have a look at this turn. So maybe number four. So I guess the beginning is fine. So what do you want to do here? Um, obviously, you want to put some pressure on the ball. Maybe you can put the guy in scoring range. You also want to try to. Cut this off as good as possible. Um, <clears throat> so I think uh, very well played here. Put the zombie in use. Um, I don't really agree with this play um, because you could, you only have two dice blocks now, and you could make this bit more dependent on how well it goes with these linemen. Because yes, it's nice to have him here. But as you'll see afterwards, um, if you get them down like you did now, um, <clears throat> might be worth to to actually um, get him get him a bit better in. So here the witch. What I don't understand is why you push her back. I would I think push her in here, and then uh, put actually then the guarder somewhere here so yeah um to kind of get her and take her out and make her not being able to use the jump up move well let's see i guess this is fine as well and you go into scoring range um now here now let's have a look at this again. So I think the white here was starting here. Um with the one, two, three, four, five, six, go for it. He could have kinda bound those two players here to to need to dodge away or even one more to bind the witch perfectly. Um 
that puts a lot more pressure because obviously the only thing he can do really is cage somewhere here by by blocking the school. <clears throat> or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go, go. Um even go further, set up the cage here with a bit of risk, which is actually now we get to the next turn. <clears throat> my preferred solution. So you can see um you have one, two, three, four players um, to cage. You even have a fifth player where you can close the cage, so you can actually put one guy up in front. Um, <clears throat> uh, maybe even in scoring range. So I would actually go with the witch here who does not have to dodge. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six. <clears throat> Then um, probably um, block with this guy and uh, set up the screen here. Um, then make the go for it up to here with the with the runner, um, and then close the cage to here. And at the end, you can still actually dodge in range with with this witch. Because, so let's see what what you did. You can say, okay, I'm gonna get rid of this school, which you did. Um, but then the problem is you need to cage back here. This guy is standing and you lose a lot of tempo to actually make it forward. And now what happens is he can actually close down the sides pretty well. Um, <clears throat> as you see here, you can even pressure your ball carrier. Um, and, and yeah, get nicely in range. Um, yeah, the question is, is it really best to put the mummy here and pressure the ball carrier? Since as you can see, you don't really have anybody else in range. But at this point, yeah, I think it's fine. Um, <clears throat> Of course, you can have to think about getting this one off. So now here, with this play, I mean, uh, in my opinion, you're both a bit too passive. Because what I would have played, I think, I would just have gone for the win. So play this guy over here. Um... <clears throat> And then you get uh, him, and there's a one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and then you can blitz with uh, this switch and go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and then you can still dodge with this guy and with this guy away to the screen. Well, actually, I do see you don't have a reroll anymore. Yeah, not sure. Um, well, I guess at the end of the day, if you have these two blocks and you get him out, uh, game is over because he can't score anymore. So at least after after you get him down, well, you don't, do you? Yeah, not sure. No, I guess it's fine. It's fine. If you don't if you don't wrestle with this witch then you get two players in range. Which is perfectly fine. Yeah, it's fine. Alright, well I mean overall well played. I guess breaking point may be um, in this turn if if you wanna play for the win, right? You can't really afford to have a cool back here. You need to make the pressure, you need to put on the pressure. And you kind of decided before to play for the win. So I think you need to and you need to play you need to play for the win more and, and I mean if this guy is here you can still move this guy kinda 
over there then right and and kind of close the way here and that will um make it a lot harder for them to set up this this cage here in the next turn because these players just can't just go here right so i think that might be might have been the the the, the point where where you can, uh, uh, yeah, could have decided to risk a bit more to lose, but also to to give yourself a real chance to win. Because I mean, imagine if this guy stands here, this guy here. I mean, what you're gonna do as 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 elves? I mean, he has card, so yeah, you can you can't even jump up because this guy is here as well. So you can't jump up one uh, two dice. You, you'd have to have two assists. So what can you do then? I mean, you'd almost have to think about going over this way, right? Which says like, well, okay, I'm going to go with the witch. One, two, three, four. F you can't really either because then you get this out. I mean, you can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then block this guy. Then uh, screen with these two guys here and here. And then... Uh, go with the witch, or go with this guy, stand up with this guy, blitz with the witch, or, or I mean, put them somewhere here in range, but then you're also split so much, it should be fairly easy to defend, um, and, and also put on pressure, because then these two guys, um, you can just full throttle on, on the ball here, and if something goes wrong, it's also, uh, yeah, not helping, so think that might have been a possibility to to turn this one around but yeah i mean after all yeah, i'm quite happy with with the way you guys played of course all right 